first of all, that I did not make my living giving speeches. And my gift for speaking is way down on the list of the gifts that I have. So I, I would encourage you to listen to the message rather than the messenger. Because the words I have to say, I think, can benefit you. You may not agree and like the way I present it, but uh, you're stuck with what, with what I can do. So, I'm going to start out by telling a little bit about my life. I don't like to talk about myself, but I think it's necessary for two reasons. One is that you don't know me, so I've got to develop some type of credibility. The other is you're going to find out that I succeeded when I was not supposed to. So that means that anybody in this room can be successful, even if you don't have the criteria that society says you have to have to be successful. So bear with me a little bit while I tell you a little bit about what I've done. I'm not begging, bragging on myself, I'm not trying to say I'm special, I'm not. I'm, I'm just like everybody else. I've just been fortunate to, to do some of the things I've done. I came from a poor family. In America, we say somebody lived on the wrong side of the track. Most of the little towns have a, rain, a track, train track going down the middle. One side develops uh, nice homes and everything. The other side's kind of a slum area, maybe like uh, some of the gypsy areas in Belgrade or some of them here. I happen to have the fortune or misfortune, whichever you want to say, to be born into a family living on the wrong side of the track. Uh, my family was very poor. Uh, went through school. I managed to get through the 12th grade, barely got my certificate, and, and, and I got out. Uh, got married at an early age. Uh, I've been married for 55 years to my wife. Uh, and when we got married, she owned a bedroom suit, uh, I owned a shotgun, <laughs> and I had $300 in a boat company stock in an old car. So our sum total of possessions was $1,000. So it doesn't take money to start out. People say, well, I don't have any money. I can't be an entrepreneur, I can start a business. All I got to say about that is hogwash. You can do it. Uh, in the process of my career, I started 12 companies. Uh, some of them did good, some of them did not. That's the process of on entrepreneurship. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you've got to be willing to fail. And I failed in some of them. Uh, some of the companies were insurance, uh, real estate, furniture business, uh, appliance sales. <clears throat> Uh, cell phone, we built cell phone towers and leased out the parts on the towers and cell phone companies. Uh, had an accounting business, a beauty shop, and photographic business. So, you see, it's kind of very, very businesses. Uh, during that process, uh, I served as a trustee on the board of one of the universities in America for several years and also on the International Board of the Gideons uh, International. And uh, now then, basically I'm an advisory status to the businesses and I spend most of my time with uh, my family, primarily with my 11 grandchildren. And uh, uh, also uh, I'm trying to give back to society because society has been very good to me. And that's one of the reasons I'm here in Serbia. This is my seventh trip in six years to Serbia. Uh, uh, I'm telling you this, you know, not to think I'm important, but to give credibility to what we're doing. Uh, some people will come and talk to you about things they read in a book, or about theory in a classroom. What I'm talking to you about is getting down and doing the work with my own hands. It's, it's not theory. It's not something read in a book. It's something I did. Things I learned, some of them the hard way. And if, if you listen to some of these things, maybe I can spare you the problems of learning some of these things the hard way. Uh, the, uh, my experience is built on over 50 years of experience actually doing these things. The, uh, many of you probably are familiar with the great Spanish philosopher George Santayana. He had this quote to say, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And uh, many times my education has come at the expense of mistakes. That's a very tough way to learn and a very expensive way to learn. So if you can learn from my mistakes, then you can be a lot better off in, in, in what you do. Uh, the, uh, uh, one of the big things that a young person needs to do in getting into business is to find a mentor. And with our society, with the email, with Skype, 
You, don't, you can go past your border. You can go to America. You can go to uh, Britain. You can go to Australia. You can go to anywhere and find a mentor where you can go to and, and they can help you. And that's great. Now I've told you a little bit about the secular side of my past. Now I want to give you just a brief uh, uh, summary of the spiritual side of it because they go hand in hand. The, uh, the, 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 the uh, video we just uh, saw and I saw that this morning and when I, was, when I, when I saw it uh, one of the things rang a bell. And one of the, his three points was purpose. And it's going to play a little bit into what I'm talking to you about today. Uh, <clears throat> both of us in America and you here are basically called a Christian nation. If you look in a book, you, see, you know, we're, we're a Christian nation as defined by, you know, a lot of people, which means that we adhere to the, the, the Bible. Most of your homes, most homes in America have a Bible in them. That's the source for my business principles. That's the source for the things that I run my business, run my life with. So you don't have to go out and buy a lot of expensive books. You can just get these principles out, out of the Bible. And uh, <clears throat> when we look at the Bible, when we study it, we see one big thing that I think a lot of us don't grasp. We see that we are eternal people, which means that we're going to live forever. Two places. We've got a choice. We've got one, we've got heaven, and we've got hell. So we're going to, we're going to live somewhere e eternally. So the thing in business is to try to structure your life to where you balance the, the spiritual and the secular to where you can plan for this life and for the life thereafter. And I think this is a part of what he spoke about, about doing things that are bigger than you. That, that not just trying to make money, but trying to make money for a purpose. You know, if, if you want to get rich, have a purpose for using that money, not just accumulate it. And I think if you do, you'll be a lot happier, and you can make a lot of people, people happier along the way. And if you ask me to sum up my, uh, my life in one sentence, it would go something like this. Whatever I do, I strive to do it with all my might. And I get that out of a book in the Bible. In Ecclesiastes, it says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. That means if I'm playing, I'm studying, eating, traveling, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to give it the best I've got. And if you don't hear anything else, remember anything else I say today, You'll go through life and apply that principle. I'll guarantee you, you'll be a better person, and especially in a business because I've run a lot of businesses and I look at people I hire, and most people are interested in when they hire, they're interested in how much they'll get paid, what the vacation is going to be. They'll be there at eight o'clock. That's the time they go to work, and at five o'clock when it's time to go home, they're out the door. Uh, I tell my grandkids when you go to work. You get somewhere 10 minutes early and you stay 10 minutes late. When you do that, you're separating yourself from the other people. You're giving them a little bit more. Little things like that will go a long way uh, to doing things with all your might. Uh, most, most businesses and groups and even countries uh, don't rise any higher than their leaders. You very seldom see any entity rise higher than their leader. And right now, Serbia. I think probably one of the greatest things they need is good leaders. And I want to finish the rest of my talk today about, about leaders, about some of the characteristics. Now this can apply to just basic life, but the, these are some characteristics that I pulled out of a business seminar, seminar that we put on. They said I had 15 minutes and they're trying to pull down <clears throat> two hours and 15 minutes. So there's one reason I'm talking a little fast. But uh, I'm going to share with you a few things that need to be found in a good leader. And this all applies to entrepreneurship, starting businesses. First thing a, a, a leader has to have is an excellent work ethic. If you don't have a good work e ethic, go to the factory and find your job. You know, go somewhere on assembly lines where somebody can tell you what to do. You've got to be a self-starter. If somebody has to call you and wake you up in the morning and get you started, you're not cut out for the business world. You've got to be a self-starter. If you want to learn about that, <clears throat> go study the life of an ant. Go to Wikipedia somewhere and pull up the ant. Study the life of an ant. You're going to find out they don't have a guide. 
They don't have any overseers. They don't have a ruler. They got to do it on their own. So we can learn a lot from the end. The second thing is, leaders need to be committed to a cause. Uh, three things, a commitment to being prepared. If you're not prepared for what you're doing, you're not going to be successful. You need to be committed to seeing a process through. When you start it, you've got to see it through. You've got to be committed to people. Those above you, those on your same level, and more important, those underneath you because they're depending on you. The third thing is that a successful leader has got to have passion uh, for what they're doing. And passion is, a, is an odd word, and it can mean a lot of things. Uh, the best way to understand words to me is to look at synonyms because I can take a synonym and I can get a much broader understanding of the word. And I picked out four synonyms for passion. It's fervor, fire, zeal, and ardor. And these nouns denote powerful, intensive emotions. And we'll look at each four of them briefly. Fervor is the great warmth and intensity of feeling. Uh, fire is a burning passion. All the Wendell Holmes Jr. said, in our youth, our hearts were touched with fire. Uh, zeal is a strong, enthusiastic devotion to a cause, idea, or goal, and tireless diligence in its furtherance. And then ardor is the fiery intensity of feeling. The fourth one is successful leaders are good managers of time. This is tremendously important. Probably your greatest asset is your time. But you know what? Everybody's equal. Bill Gates, how much time does he have in the day? 24 hours. How much time do you have? 24 hours. You're on the same plane as Bill Gates. So it all boils down to what you do at that time. One thing about time, we can't store it up. At the end of the day, it's gone. We never can bring it back again. And 80% of the results produce 20% 80% of the results produced by 20% of our efforts. So that tells us we're wasting our time a lot. So you know, if we're going to be an entrepreneur, if we're going to work for ourselves, we've got to watch our time. You know, we've got to make sure that our time is productive as much as possible. And uh, this may be your greatest asset, so you need to value time just like you would a block of gold that you had that was worth $20,000. It's just as valuable. And the last thing I want to look at is that successful leader, leaders need to be good money managers. Uh, there's no saying, live within your means. A lot of us have heard that. I've got a better saying, live under your means. What I've tried to do, I've got an 80-20-20 formula. 80-20-20. I try to live within or under 80% of my income. I try to save 10% of my income. If you don't understand saving, especially if you're young, look at compounding interest. If I offered you one dollar and double it every uh, year for 20 years or a million dollars, which one would you take? Most people would take a million dollars. If you take the other one, you're going to wind up with eight million. Now there's a, a time value of money involved in that. But, uh, uh, compounding of interest is, is, is tremendous. And if you you'll study that, I think you'll see the, the, the benefit of, 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 uh, of saving. The other thing is give 10% back to other people. Share other people in, in, through your church, through organizations, whatever way you can help other people. And if you'll stay within 8 to 10, 10, especially if you're young, I'll guarantee you, you'll never have any financial problems. Uh, <clears throat> One thing that a lot of people do is their income rises. Now, I know you're saying income's not rising in Serbia. I believe that. But someday it's going to. When things get going, the income's going to rise. Many people, when the income rises, what do they do? Their standard of living rises with it. Income rises, standard of living rises. Well, you've been living on this for a long time, and your income's up here. Why not just move it up just a little bit and put more into savings? And it goes on up. Don't try to catch up with it. So if we'll do that, that'll help tremendously. Now, these five things will help in business, but you know, if you're not even planning to go into business, they'll help you in your everyday life. These are just fundamental things, and I can tell you here they work. 
They may not work for you, but they work for me. So thank you for allowing me to come and see you.